morning. Welcome back. We're still watching Daybreak on this 12th day of uh, March 2024. And it's time I want to introduce the panelists here in studio. We have uh, Senator Richard Onyonka, Senator from Kisei County. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Sammy. Good morning. <coughs> senator Veronica Maina is a nominated Senator. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Sam. Nice to see you again. Yes, it's been so long. Why did you How go to? <laughs> I'm around. I was here the other day. Okay. So I'm back to the studio. Okay, good to yes. see you. Beatrice Zelachi is the Member of Parliament for Dagoretti North Constituency. Good morning. Good morning, Sam. How are you? I am well. It's good to see you as well. Deputy Speaker, we missed you last week. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. All right. She's also the woman representative for Wasin Gishu Gladys Boss here in studio. And this morning we're waking up to uh, the news on the front page of uh, the Daily Nation, License to Kill. They are talking about the menace of the border border in the country, attributing uh, a third of the road accidents and deaths uh, to people that may have been riding motorcycles as pillion passengers or as riders themselves. They have a very serious image there of a man riding a motorcycle carrying what looks like it's five and a half, probably six sacks of charcoal. Six. six. And the owner of the charcoal is also With riding. no helmet. Without a helmet. Um, and in slippers. In slippers. Oh, yeah. I had not seen the, the slippers. What do you call this? Akala. Akala, Akala yes. It's the, those are all the things that can that contribute to the accident. Right. And the instability, um, too much luggage. This person, base, obviously, being up there, chances of him falling are extremely high. They have no helmet. In fact, the helmet is in front of the bike. Mm. Oh, no yeah. Of course, alcohol. So the, Some of them will be drunk. Yeah? Mm. The motorbike is carrying a lot of stuff, including the helmet. But you know, the, we have police officers full on the, the roads, full. Yeah. Yeah. Are, I mean, every corner you go, there is a police check. You can go on 20 kilometers and find four uh, roadblocks. So obviously, the back stops with the police. How is it that mm. this can actually... They are going, they actually drive past the police officers. Mm. Mm. The police officers will occasionally flag down vehicles and they just collect money and let them... But what has just happened? Because, I mean, if you look at these two people, I'm sure they have an idea of what can happen to them if they were to fall. How come that people don't realize the danger they put themselves in? But that's why you have traffic rules, because people can become careless. So you have, that's why you have the Traffic Act. You have the traffic rules, which people are trained to follow. So if they, that is to mitigate any chance of, yeah. of, a, of accidents. Then the police are supposed to enforce. That's why we have traffic police. It's an entire department of the police mm. to ensure this doesn't happen. In fact, the enforcement is an issue of enforcement, yeah. because the other day we were in Kigali, Rwanda. The shocking story is in Kigali, you cannot find a second passenger. You can't have a second billion passenger on a motorbike. It's just one passenger and they have their helmet. I mean, a rider cannot even imagine to take a second person on that motorbike. And the discipline, I, I saw the motorbikes. When you get to the traffic lights, everybody stops, including the motorbikes. Have you ever seen our motorbikes even posing because there is a traffic light? They don't, and they will ride everywhere on every side of the road. In fact, there is always a possibility that uh, if your vehicle swerves just a little, Mm -hmm. You are most likely going to knock uh, a motorbike and a passenger and three passengers in Kenya. I, I think the enforcement should be very strict now. Okay. Either they the pull police a bit don't care and, and they, they, they the condone rules. it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, and then on the standard, infidelity, murder, and bizarre rant, Evans Cosgay made scary remarks about his wife, Jacqueline Kemayo, accusing her of cheating and want of dire consequences on his social media platforms, tagged newsrooms and the police, then he did the unthinkable, slaughtered his wife and hanged himself. And of course, uh, there's a quotation there from X. Rest in peace, my dear wife, I loved you. We promised each other so many things, but I did not know that I was alone in those plans. Honorable Elijah, what's going on? I mean, we keep hearing of a lot of these stories on a daily basis. And one would wonder, when you report, of course, what is happening to the society? Because you'd have imagined that people would be more sensitive, but it's, it's like it's getting out of hand. Well, yes, and uh, I think as we talk of mental health, now this, our young people are the most, they are, they, are, they are in another world, not in the world we are in. You see, for us, this generation, we love life, to be very honest. 
and you'll do anything to make sure you continue with life. Now, our young people are not of this generation. And it is something we have to now start asking ourselves, how do you deal with it? First of all, I know they are the ones, uh, like uh, Evans, when I read also me on social media, those things Evans used to write, you know, I used to ask myself, okay, is he trying to think of it? Then in a point where he comes and he does it, it means, number one, and you know, he wrote to even the police, he did everything. So it's time the police also, do we take them to a training to understand, uh, uh, not all of them, but I think you can pick a team in the police now and uh, CS needs to think about it. Mm -hmm. And even us, we need a team of police who can understand uh, psychology. They, they are able to read the mind. Yes, I know police can read. We normally say in security, I can read whether you are lying or not. But in this one now, th this is now another, uh, another agenda we have to ask ourselves. Just the way we see in schools how we are dealing with the counseling, and that, that is what the police needs. Uh, because you, can, you see someone <coughs> writing something, don't ignore. Now, this young man is trying to tell us, do not ignore anything these young people just post like a joke. And you're thinking, mm. oh, we are on social media. We are just doing, no. Pick the mind and call the person. Listen to this person because you'll realize he's, he's, he's in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a depression where he doesn't care anymore about life. And even if he goes with 20, he, 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 to him, it's okay. And it's not his wish. So for us, we have to, this is a, a wake up call for right. all of us to think, what is this that is happening? But then let me just say one thing on this issue of border border. As much as it's the police, it is also the county and it is us politicians. We decided they can do anything, they are voters. Yeah, we have to change that attitude and bring in regulations that are very clear. Mm. And even in Nairobi, uh, my governor should give each jurisdictions just to go to Hadi and see how those young Buddha Buddhas are. They are very disciplined. In Hadi, you can never come out from another jurisdiction to enter Hadi in Karen. They are well and on with their association. They know. And so why can it work there? and it can't work in any other place in Nairobi. And why is it that we cannot allow to understand this is also a motor vehicle? You have decided yours will be a motorcycle. Right. And so you just have to follow the transport regulations, starting from you must have an ID to ride a Boda Boda. You must have a license. You must have all these things. But we have just decided to let it go. They will carry four people. One will snatch the bag in the streets. Nobody will care. It is time. It's also another wake-up call. Right. But for this, it's cause gay, but there's another one that the government and all of us in your neighborhood, they have, for me, I find it, I am in a, a, a constituency where we have very interesting foreigners. And each of them have... A, a team that protects them. So the Nigerians, they have some policemen who I know protect. We have Pakistani, they have their own, they are protected. Yeah. So each team here in the, in, in the Gorichi North, that's how they operate. They make sure they compromise the security sector. And the other day I was here, I told, I pleaded with the president and the CS, do not allow our good officers to stay here more than three years. Staying here in more than three years, you are compromised, you become something else. Two years is enough, go to another station. That is my plea. But uh, uh, we uh, must deal with them yeah. because at night, when you walk in Kilimani at night, which I do, I have, nowadays I've had to be a policeman also. I will find young people all over, how they are dressed, we have decided that is our value. I don't know what is Kenya, and I don't know what is happening with our country. We have decided to become Sodom and Gomorrah, and we don't care completely. We have just let our country like that. And so when you look, I met, I met all of them university students. I am like, what the heck? And they will tell you, okay, I have this problem, I have this problem. And in all the clubs, how I wish you can walk in clubs 
in Dagoriti North. Oh, you will feel sad for parents. And all of them have come because they will get a foreigner who will tell them, and you'll see the dollars are just moving and all that. And this guy doesn't care. Just moves with a girl here, finishes, moves there. They don't care. It's done in the car. It's done all over. And it's in the morning. I'm sorry, Kenyans. But that's what is happening to our young girls in this town. And we have to now rein in. We said we don't want a brothel in Kenya. We have so many in the bus. Well, um, confessions from the <coughs> member of parliament for the Great North, I mean, uh, who doubts it? And Senator Nyonka, I mean, <coughs> this has gone on for so long. If you had to even look at the year 2024, the number of killings that have happened in this country, whether it's a man to the wife or um, strangers to women or even to men. If you look at that story on page four, my sweetheart, you decided to go against all what we promised each other nine years ago. I had confided in you. In fact, I trusted you more than I was trusting my own parents for you only to betray me after getting some money. But it's okay. Let it be a lesson mm -hmm. to the rest. And then he posted, rest in peace, my love. I'm following you back. Then he also posted, it has officially ended, guys, though I am mentally disturbed by the things that she has put me through. I mean, all this, is there a possibility of a solution? And I hear what uh, the panelists here are saying about the younger generation, because, for instance, Evans was 33, uh, yeah. the wife was mm. 29 years old. So is there nine anything years that ago, can be... there were 21, and uh, yeah. the other one was even Very young. uh, younger. 19 or 20. Yeah, so is there anything that... We, 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 can, we, we can actually do, practically do, to turn this tide. Um, first of all, Sami, good morning. I'd like to, to say I'm happy to be with my leader, sisters here. The, by the way, the issue of Borobor and this one are kind of related, all right? Mm -hmm. what, is, what is happening right now is that we are having a disconnect in our society because of modernity. And in other countries, what they do is if they see a trend, whether it is a trend because of generational change, whether it's a, tr a trend because of industrial development or growth, whether it's a trend in, in the general development of a people of a country, you'll find that there are experts who are sitting down and trying to come up with solutions to or create interventions on how they are going to manage, quote unquote, the crisis. The problem is, it has been being reported every day. It is very fashionable to read a story that it's a police officer who shot his wife and his colleagues and they died, and we dismiss it. Mm. And yet in reality, police officers are children and fathers and brothers or mothers and sisters in that case mm. of this society. This society has changed. This society has become more individualistic. Before, in, in the olden days, I mean, and I'm not uh, very young, so I'm able to, to quote that. In the olden days, there's a social uh, cultural network where you would find if it is a man who was feeling that there were issues between him and his wife, then there was a network which existed between his brothers, his uncles. They would kind of talk to him and cancel him out. They would look for the lady, and, and that network would be worked on. Right now, everybody's on their own. And why is everybody on their own? Because that is what modernity is drawing us into. We are slowly shifting from being an African people who are, who are caring, loving, understanding, moderated. We were never extreme on any other issue. We rarely would involve himself in consumption of drugs. Alcohol was seen as a social event. It was never do or die. Mm. I mean, right now, you see what is happening in Central. And... Um, then you have the other challenges which come up, like in central, the case is, do you go in and disband the consumption of alcohol, or do you treat the consumption of that alcohol mm -hmm. as, as actually a disease? So I would like to say that femicide, which is now the, and also femicide and, and genocide, and not genocide, femicide and suicide, yeah. um, sometimes become uh, uh, addictive. When young people see other young people killing themselves, if you read a lot of these things, you'll find that they, they love that. They'll pick that, and it becomes a, 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 like a fashion. So for me, my suggestion would be, again, can we go back to our education? 
can we take the CBC and begin to treat issues which are directly related to our own very existence from that age to the time when many of us are becoming adults? The reality you have right now. I mean, uh, I'm sure all my sisters here will agree with me. Go and visit your friends and get into the house. You say hi to the lady and maybe the husband is there. In about two minutes, everybody's on the phone. They are not talking and everybody's chatting yeah. with everybody else except the you who came to visit them. Mm -hmm. So we are, no long, we are no longer what we used to be. So this is something that I think we need to start looking at and interrogating as a people, as a community called Kenya. I want to say this. I had a very, very lucky chance of growing up in, in Rwanda. I lived there for about 10 years. Where? Rwanda. Mm -hmm. I lived there for 10 years. The truth is the Rwandese experience is something that we need to just look at and if need be, begin to go and benchmark and begin to understand how is it that, you see, we, we are talking about in Rwanda, a border carries a helmet and he has another helmet for you as a passenger. Mm -hmm. the, the, if you look at the pikipiki, it is clean. The gentleman himself is well dressed. <laughs> the lights, as she said, when the lights are red, you stop. Right. Everybody stops. Everybody stops. This is not just with border borders. That is what happens with public transport. That is what happens with private individuals. In Rwanda, when there is a zebra crossing, the driver comes in and stops. Even when there's nobody crossing, mm. according to what, I mean, the way the law says. I mean, you can go. In Rwanda, education. These stories you have in Kenya, these stories about, oh, you know, students who are cheating in exams, those are things that those people left. And like I always say, I'm sure when you, when you were there, you were told, the people running the education system who are politically provided the, the curricula are Kenyans. Kenyans, yeah. yeah. I mean, when we are out, we Kenyans are, are very so good well behaved. Out. We perform so well. Mm -hmm. We achieve such great feats. Mm -hmm. When we come to our country, we are just a banana republic. Our behavior, our character, our breaking of the law, our consumption of alcohol. Soon we are going to become like the South African countries where people wake up at 8 in the morning, they are drinking a beer as they are having breakfast. That's the way it is. You go to Namibia, you right. go to, to, to Botswana. There are certain things as a country we must begin to ask ourselves. Okay. Are we moving in the right direction? And you see, finally, I want to say this. We have left our psychoanalytical engagement to church leaders. Some of them who have no credibility at all to try and convince people and tell them how to behave well and ask them how to love each other and ask them to, 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 to take the name of the Lord and engage each other as Christians. And this goes on with Christianity and this goes on with Islam. As some of you saw the other day, we were in Isiolo and you see what gentlemen are doing and they're running their county and they are Muslim. Mm. And we were asking people, which mosque does this guy go? I mean, he's made his county destitute. But every Friday he goes to the mosque. What is it with us? I hear you, Senator, and you're raising a lot of questions, and that's what we've done here. Um, not, uh, I mean, there are challenges really to deal with. Um, the answers have to be found. I don't know what you think. You can uh, write to us at Citizen TV and at some get to the hashtag to use is Debrick, that is on X, or you can text us on 24422. We're also receiving news that the Haitian Prime Minister has resigned. I don't know what that does to the deployment to Haiti. We're taking a short break. We'll be back shortly. But also remember, the President last week said that there's a possibility that they will look for a formula to ensure that if a candidate is a man, the running mate is a woman, and if a candidate is a woman, the running mate will be a man. We we'll talk about that after the break. Stay tuned. Lovely.